the next president of the United States, President Donald J. Trump. Thank you very much, and a very special hello to Greenville right now, Greenville. And hello to North Carolina, a special place for me. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm thrilled to be back in this incredible state with thousands of proud, hardworking American patriots. That's what you are. And I'd like to begin by asking a question. Are you better off now than you were four years ago? I don't think so. I don't think so. Not even close. That's a big question. Think about that, right? We have to get out and vote. I'm here today with a message of hope for all Americans. With your vote in this election, I will end inflation. I will stop the invasion, and I will bring back the American dream. Our country is being crippled and destroyed by Kamala Harris. Kamala. How the hell did that ever happen? How did that ever happen? The guy had 14 million votes. I'm no fan of his, by the way. But he had 14 million votes. She had none. She was the first to lose. 22 people. She was the first out. She never made it to the great state of Iowa. Never made it. And, uh, well, you know, they talk about it. She is a threat to democracy. I mean, that's really it. She's a threat to a lot of things, but that's the way it has to be, because we're winning by a lot. We're leading by a lot. We're leading in the polls. Every single state looks like we're doing really well. And with your support on November 5th, America will be bigger, better, bolder, richer, safer, and stronger than ever before. This election is a choice between whether we will have a four, I think of this, four more years. I, could, could you stand it? 
four more years of incompetence and stupidity and failure and disaster, or whether we will begin the four greatest years in the history of our country. I think we have a real chance. And we were set back. We were set back. And then you think about what they've done, because I happen to think the border is the biggest problem we have, not inflation. Inflation's terrible. It's a country buster and the economy, all those things. But I happen to think that what they've done at the border to our country by letting millions and millions of people in, totally unchecked and unvetted, I think it's the worst thing, including murderers, drug dealers, people from prison. They opened up their prisons of the world into our country. I think it's the worst thing anyone's ever heard. And a lot of terrorists are coming in, record numbers of terrorists. Can, nothing good can happen. Nothing good can happen. After all the catastrophe she has caused, Kamala Harris can't say one thing that she'd do differently from sleepy Joe Biden. Not one thing. And all she had to do is go to him and say, wake him up. Wake him up. Wake him up. We're going to sign an order, close the border. And it's closed. She didn't need a bill. And we want people to come into our country, but they have to come in legally, right? They have to come in legally. And I'm asking you to be excited about the future of our country again. You're not excited. It's hard to get excited with these people, with, with Biden. Let's get excited about Biden. But nobody was excited, and they went to him. Terrible thing. And they said, we want you out. He said, no, I'm not going to do that. We want you out. Uh, well, he said, uh, if you put it that way, okay. No, I mean, think of it. This was the overthrow of a president of the United States. He didn't want to get out. In fact, the word is that he likes me more than he likes Kamala. I believe that's true. I believe that's true. What do you think, Watley? Uh, how good is Watley? What do you think? You know, he's running the whole shebang. He ran, he ran your state. As you know, the Republican Party, we did so well, I said, put him in charge of everything this time. He'll stop the cheating. He's going to stop the cheating. How are you doing? Are they cheating, Michael? They're trying, but are they, uh, they're not going to get away with it, right? He said, he said, no. That's why I had him. They didn't get away with it in this day. They got away with it in plenty of places. This will be America's new golden age. It's going to happen. Every problem facing us can be solved, but now the fate of our nation is in your hands. North Carolina, you have to stand up and you have to tell Kamala Harris that you've had enough. You can't take it anymore. She's the worst vice president in history. It's the worst administration in the history of our country. They make Jimmy Carter look like he was a great president. He's a very happy man. Kamala, you're the absolute epitome of, I won't say it. Kamala, you're fired. Get the hell out of here. Get out. Get out of here, Kamala. I've just come from Western North Carolina, where I witnessed the terrible devastation of Hurricane Helene. Boy, that is some devastation. You look at nature. It's called nature. They right? have houses. They're beautiful, big, strong, powerful houses. And they just wiped out. They're gone. The, the footings are gone. The foundations, everything's gone. It's unbelievable when you look at it. To every family who has lost a loved one or a home, our hearts are with you, and we are praying for you, and we will come back, and we will be here on January 20th, and we will do a great job of rebuilding the state. And when I'm President, North Carolina will get the support you need and deserve, and that is without question, because you didn't get the proper support from this administration. They spent their money on illegal migrants. They spent their money. They didn't have any money left for North Carolina. That's not the way it's supposed to work. Or other places, by the way. Plenty of other places. The polls are open for early voting in North Carolina every day from now to November 2nd. So get out there and vote. Get out there and vote. If you have to, you wait. November 5th is fine, too. We just have to make sure we vote, make sure it's counted. If you're displaced due to the storm, 
You do not have to return to your home county. You know that, right, to vote. You can request a ballot to your temporary housing location. We're taking good care of it. They've got it worked out. And by the way, I don't know if you've heard, so here, houses are gone. It's all — it's like, I can't believe the devastation. They set a record for the first few days of voting. Now, these are people that lost their houses. In some cases, unfortunately, they lost family members. And yet, they set a record in early voting. They've never voted for the number of days anywhere close to the voting that you've done, right? Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? And I know Michael and the team, they worked very hard on making it convenient. But to think that that's a record that would be set. A lot of people thought it would be 20 or 30 percent. It's uh, the highest number that you've ever had. That's a great compliment. And this is Trump territory, and that is Trump territory, too. So that should be a good thing. So go to TrumpVote24.com slash NC for more details. With your help, 15 days from now — can you imagine 15 days? Oh. Can you imagine? 15 days from now, we're going to win North Carolina. We're going to defeat Kamala Harris. And we're going to make America great again. This state was once the beating heart of American manufacturing, especially furniture. I used to come down here all the time to buy furniture for hotels and things that I was building. I'd come, I'd go into the different places. The talent you had was unbelievable, but I could see it year by year by year. It was being dissipated. It was being taken over by China and others. And all we needed to do is slap some tariffs on. It would have been perfect. What a shame. What a shame. But they're going to come back. They're going to come back. You watch. They're going to come back fast. Year after year, globalist, radical left politicians like Kamala Harris sold you out and allowed your jobs to be plundered and stolen from you, brought to other countries. After NAFTA, the worst trade deal ever made, and China's entry into the World Trade Organization, where they were considered a growing nation, we are a — we are a developing nation. We're a developing nation, too. Have you ever seen some of our places? We're developing, too. We're developing more than them. Believe me, we need it more than they do. They're a developing nation, so they got all these benefits that we weren't entitled to because stupid people were negotiating for us. <laughs> North Carolina lost over 300,000 manufacturing jobs, including those skilled people with the furniture. I used to watch them carve out a handle. How would you like it, sir? Would you like it this way? Watch. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> he gives me the most beautiful. We lost that whole thing. What a shame. And we're getting it back, though, including 60 percent of its furniture manufacturing jobs, and now even more than that. Under Kamala Harris, the United States has lost 50,000 manufacturing jobs this year alone. And those are our bread and butter. But under the Trump administration, we are going to take back what is ours. We will end the looting ransacking, raping, and pillaging of North Carolina and, frankly, every other state in the Union. Every other state also. We will bring back our jobs, our factories, our wealth, and our dreams. We're going to bring them back. They are dreams, actually. They're going to be dreams no longer because you're going to have it, so we don't have to call it a dream. Starting in January, we will give our companies the lowest taxes, the lowest energy costs. By the way, we have more energy than any country in the world. I call it liquid gold, <laughs> including Saudi Arabia and Russia by far. Think of it. Think of it. Four years ago, we were energy independent. Can you believe it? And now we're buying — now we're buying tar. Now we're buying tar from Venezuela. It's not oil. It's tar. We have to melt it to get the — to get oil out of it. We will give our companies the lowest taxes, the lowest energy costs, the lowest regulatory burdens, and free access to the best and biggest market on the planet, but only if they make their products here in America and hire American workers for the job. Very simple. And if these companies don't make their products here — in other words, if they make them in another country and they bring them here — then they will pay a very stiff tariff. 
They will send their products into the United States for the privilege of competing with our workers and our cherished companies. They're going to have to pay a very big, big penalty. And I will never apologize for defending America. I will never apologize for putting America first. I will protect our workers. I will protect our jobs. I will protect our borders. You know, you've had politicians that didn't do it. They were either stupid, maybe dishonest, could have been dishonest. Hard to believe they would be dishonest, isn't it? When you see guys like Adam Shifty Schiff, he would never take anything. Can you believe this guy's probably going to be a senator? I can't even believe it. I'll tell you, I, went, I was in California. We have some of the biggest crowds you've ever seen. I was in California. I'd love to have God to come down and be the vote counter just for one day and see how well we're doing in California. They send millions and millions of ballots out. They don't know what the hell's happening. And no matter what happens, they say, well, California is not available. I have a rally. I have 100,000 people. They have a rally. They have 200 people. And they say they're going to win. They're not going to win. Now, did you ever hear the expression that the vote counter is far more important than the candidate? And unfortunately, we can't let that happen. We've got to take it back. I will protect our families, and I will protect the — thank you. It's true. The vote counter is more important than the candidate. That's been true, unfortunately. And I will protect the birthright of our children to live the richest and most powerful nation. He's going to live in the most powerful nation on the face of the Earth. It's going to be the richest nation. With four more years of Kamala Harris, North Carolina will be an economic wasteland. You know that. You see what's happening. I took off more regulations than any president in history times four, and they put a lot of them back, and there was no reason to do it. We had the best jobs. We had the best economy in the history of our country. And now we had no inflation, by the way. You know, we had the best economy with no inflation. That's actually a hard thing to do, if you think about it. We had no inflation, essentially no inflation. And the best — now we have inflation that's killing everybody. Kamala's inflation has already cost a typical family over $30,000 in higher prices. And now she wants to raise the typical family's taxes by nearly $3,000 a year. Take a look at this. Kamala Harris is going to significantly raise taxes. Taxes are going to have to go up. Kamala's plan will raise families' taxes by nearly $2,600 a year. Under Kamala, prices have already soared. Now she'd make it worse with even higher taxes. Taxes are going to have to go up. President Trump will cut taxes again. No taxes on tips, overtime, or Social Security. I'm Donald J. Trump, and I approve this message. Thank you. And by the way, she wants to confiscate your guns. You got to think about that. The tax queen is also demanding a shocking 33 percent tax hike on all domestic production, along with the largest capital gains tax hike, tax hike in history. Think of this. They want to raise your taxes to a level that you haven't seen before, and they're running on this platform, okay? In all of my years, I've never seen anybody running for office where they, we will raise your taxes. They say they're going to raise your taxes. You're going to lose all your companies because they go to other places. You know, it's very simple. You're going to tax them out of the market. They're going to go to other places. That goes your job. By contrast, I will massively cut taxes for workers and small businesses. And very importantly, there will be no tax on tips. No tax on overtime. And very important for your seniors, no tax on Social Security benefits for our seniors, right? I will make interest on car loans. This is something — they called me up from Wall Street, the most brilliant people. They called me up. How did — where do you think of that? Sounds simple, right? But it's not so simple. I always say it's like the paperclip, you know? Some guy, 129 years ago, he came up, he took a little piece of stuff, and he went away. All of a sudden, he has the paperclip. He made a fortune. People look at it, they say, 
Why didn't I think of that? This is the same thing. I will make interest on car loans fully tax deductible because affording a car is essential to restoring the American dream. And it'll be great for Detroit and South Carolina and North Carolina. It'll be great for a lot of states, but it will. I mean, how many, you know, a lot of people are going to buy cars when you do that. And we want them to buy them only in this country. We're not interested in buying cars for other, from other countries. Do we agree? We, we want to buy them. You'll even buy them if they're made in South Carolina. Do you agree? No. All right. We'll make them in North Carolina. Now, we want to get them from Detroit because Michigan has suffered. They've lost like 70 percent of their their car. And by the way, with all those, you heard the stat, 50,000, 60,000 manufacturing jobs wiped out last month. We are, we are just doing so badly as a country. We don't know. It. We're a nation in decline. We're a nation in decline, and I hate to say it. And, you know, I didn't have to do this. I had a lot of options. I could have been on a beautiful beach someplace. I could have been. I could have been on a beautiful beach. But I watched what was happening after that ridiculous election where I got more votes than any sitting president in the history of our country. But — but the good side of that is 15 days. We've been waiting a long time for this. 15 days. Disgraceful. It's a disgrace. But I watched how bad they were doing. They were destroying this country. Step by step, they were destroying it. We would have had no war with Ukraine, with Russia, Ukraine. They went in because of a lot of things. They went in because of our energy policy. They went in because of Biden's stupidity and his rhetoric. And you take a look at what happened. They went in because they saw Afghanistan. They said, wow, they're a paper tiger. There was never a more embarrassing day in the life of our country or period in the life than what happened with Afghanistan, the way the way that we got out of Afghanistan. And Putin saw that. Yeah, he's right. He said Joe was sleeping. You're right, I guess. He was. Putin saw that and he went in. He would have never done it. We would have never had October 7th with Israel. We would have never had inflation. That was caused by energy, largely by energy. Our energy was incredible. We had it down to $1.87 a gallon, and it went up to five and a half dollars. On day one of the Trump administration, I will terminate Kamala's insane electric vehicle mandate, and we will end the Green News scam once and for all. The Green News scam will end. And I love Elon, by the way. You know, he makes all those electric cars. But he understands that, too. He's got a great — he makes a great car, great part, and a lot of people like it. And it's a perfect application for a lot, but not for everybody. Some want gasoline propelled, and we have a lot of gasoline right under there. And some want other things. They want to have a hybrid. The one thing I can't get used to is hydrogen, you know? You know the story with hydrogen? It's great until it blows up, in which case you're not recognizable. Even guys, strong guys like this, they'd call you mom or your wife. Is it a mom or a — oh, look at that. Oh, I know them. Very wealthy parents. That's nice, you know? I know them. No, your kids wouldn't be recognizable. That's not a good thought, huh? How's my son doing? Uh, well, he tried the new hydrogen car. It didn't work out too well. So if they want to give me one for free, even if they have it fully developed, where they haven't seen a problem in a couple of months, I have no interest in it. But we're going to be developing a lot of new — a lot of things, and that's what we want. And we want to have a lot of application. By the way, I want to thank Elon Musk for providing us with Starlink for North Carolina and for Georgia. A man called me from North Carolina that I knew, and they were having a lot of trouble because our government, our federal government, was doing a terrible job. That's Biden and Kamala. They didn't know what the hell was happening. They spent all their money on the illegals coming in. You know, they had no money left. But they were doing a terrible job, and they called me. They said, do you know Elon Musk? I said, I do. In fact, he endorsed me, like, so beautifully. His endorsement was one of the most beautifully written endorsements. That's in between those rocket ships that go up and down all the time. I mean, how cool was that, though, right? Yeah. I'm watching this thing. I said, oh, what, what's going on? It's going to — I had no idea. I was on the phone with a friend, just to make it a little bit longer story. I was on the phone talking to a very important guy, actually, and I have the television muted. It's dead muted. And I see this ball of fire coming, like a 20-story building. It's coming down, coming. 
I say, would you do me a favor? Hold it. I've never said, what the hell is happening? I thought maybe it switched over to a movie or something. And I put the phone down. Very important guy. You know what? I never picked it up. The guy was holding for like 45 minutes. I forgot he was on the phone because — and now there are all these idiots back there will say, he's cognitively impaired because he put the phone. He's cognitively impaired. You know, I do this stuff five, six, seven times a day for 52 days without a break. And then if you say — if you say one wrong word, which I don't, actually, I don't. Like the, you say the. Oh, I heard a word that wasn't exactly proper. He's cognitive. They're sick people. I'll tell you what, they are really not all of them. Not all of them. I'd, I'd say about 92 percent. A couple of good ones. That's a lot of cameras going on. There are a couple of good ones back there. No, it, it is cra isn't it crazy? Isn't it crazy what they do and the level of meanness, the way they write about people? That they — and the way they protect — how about 60 Minutes, the way they protected Kamala? She gave an answer. She gave an answer. Think of it. 60 Minutes, CBS, and they ought to lose their license, and they ought to take it off the air. It's the biggest — how about this? She gives an answer that was cognitively a mess, right? She gives an answer that was grossly incompetent. They removed the entire answer and put another answer in there. Where the hell — they don't do that with anybody that I've ever heard. With me, they do the opposite. I give them a gorgeous, full-flowing, magnificent, beautiful answer. I call it the weave, right? All Always get right back to the right place, but you cover a lot of territory this way. But you give a beautiful answer, and then what they do is they take pieces of it out. And all of you say, what the hell happened to my beautiful answer? They do the opposite. And that's bad, too, but that's not like this. They took her entire answer out, threw it out, and they said, this looks terrible. And they put a new answer in. I mean, that's the biggest scandal, in my opinion, because that's election interference. That's the biggest scandal in the history of broadcasting. Right? The biggest scandal in the history of broadcasting, in my opinion, six so — we'll see what happens. They're being — they're being sued. They're being sued by a lot of people. No, they should lose their license for that, right? You know, the fake news is protecting them. How dare he say that? Why would he ever say lose it? They took her answer, threw it out, and gave her a new answer, and they're trying to defend it. Uh, boy. Can you imagine if that happened with me? It would be over. The electric chair. <laughs> and by the way, does anybody have any doubt that they worked with her campaign to get rid of that stupid answer? She's a mess. She's a cognitive mess, and nobody wants to talk about it. And we can't have four more years. We had four years of it. We can't take another four years of it, can we? We will quickly become energy independent, and we will frack, 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 and drill, baby, drill, right? Drill. <laughs> drill, baby, drill. We're going to drill you. You're going to say, sir, we have too much energy. They're going to come back. Ted Budd's going to call me. Sir, may I see you with a few of the people? I said, who? Who are you going to see me with, Ted? A few of our big, very important people from North Carolina. Sir, it's too much energy is being given to us. The prices are getting too low. Is there something you can do about it, sir? We're making too much money. We got jobs. We got everything. We're winning too much, sir. We can't take it anymore because for years we've been losing. So please, sir, do something about the winning. It's just too much for the people of North Carolina to take. And I'll say, Ted, I don't care how much. We're going to win more. We're going to win more. We're going to keep winning, Ted. I don't care what you say. There he is. Look at him. And I'll cut your energy prices. Here's a pledge. One year from January 20, that's when you take office. We're going to win. And I'm going to cut your energy prices in half, 50 percent your energy. We have it right there. And then everything else is going to start to come down. Your cost of energy is so important. Interest rates, too. We're going to be cutting them. But the energy I can do right away, I'll get those guys Drilling, they are wild. They are tough and wild. They are crazy. 
They'll be drilling so much. We're going to — you know what? If they drill themselves out of business, I don't give a damn, right? <laughs> We're going to get your prices. We're going to get your prices down so low. We're going to get them down 50 percent. So remember, I said it. As we rebuild our economy, we'll also restore our borders. For four straight years, Kamala has imported an army of illegal alien gang members and migrant criminals from prisons and jails, insane asylums and mental institutions all around the world, from Venezuela to the Congo, not just in South America. The Congo in Africa, many people are being brought in from the Congo. The great thing is, they make our criminals look like really nice people. These, these people are so much more vicious, they cut you up and they don't even think about it the next day. Look at these beautiful ladies in the — these ladies in the front are going, right, geez, this, is, this is a rather depressing speech he's making, I must say. They say, look how beautiful — I happen to know them. They're not into the world of being cut up, right? They never heard that. They weren't educated exactly that way. Look, they're looking at me. They're so cute. They're saying, oh, this is terrible. Believe me, they're worse than that. That's how bad they are. And she has resettled some of the worst criminals anywhere in the world into your communities to prey upon innocent American citizens. When I win on November 5th, the migrant invasion ends and the restoration of our country begins. Okay? Now they're happy. Now she's happy. She's happy now. One of the deadliest and most vicious migrant gangs that Kamala has imported into our country is the savage Venezuelan prison gang they formed in these horrible prisons in Venezuela. Tren de Aragua. Have you heard of them? You don't want to hear of them. That's taking over apartment complexes and unleashing a violent terror spree all over America. You know, in Aurora, what they're doing. You've been reading about it in Aurora. Colorado, you have a governor. He's a radical left lunatic, and he's petrified. He doesn't want anything to do. These guys have guns that are as good as our military. They're of military quality, sometimes better than the Supreme, called the Supreme version. Where the hell do they get this stuff? And they're vicious. And now, today, in the New York Post, on the front page, I read where they've taken over Times Square. Isn't that wonderful? Can you imagine? And uh, let's take a look at this, please. Open borders, deadly consequences. Border crisis, record high crossings are putting a strain on cities across America. It is a full-blown invasion. Armed Venezuelan gang members storming an apartment complex in Aurora, Colorado. When people talk about migrant crime, this is what they're talking about. Biden and Harris had created a program to bring them in under humanitarian parole. I am in favor of saying that we're not going to treat people who are undocumented across the border as criminals. More than 13,000 illegal immigrants convicted of murder have been released into the United States. My 20-year-old daughter, Kayla Hamilton, was murdered in her own room. Kayla's murderer was apprehended by Border Patrol crossing illegally into the U.S. Kayla's murderer had been improperly released into the United States. Abolish ICE. Yeah, we need to probably think about starting from scratch. An Afghan national is in custody today after being accused of plotting an election day terrorist attack. The suspect entered the U.S. on a special immigrant visa. More than a dozen people suspected of being Tren de Aragua gang members right here in San Antonio. The gang members had been terrorizing the apartment complex. New details in the murder at Lake and Riley. The illegal immigrant suspect who cops say committed the heinous murder is a Venezuelan national. And was paroled and released into the country by the Biden administration. Two men investigators say are in the country illegally from Venezuela are charged with capital murder and the death of Jocelyn Nungaray. Court documents suggest a group of men arrested for beating and robbing a Dallas woman last month are members of a Venezuelan street gang. Manuel Hernandez Hernandez was booked by Colleyville police just two days earlier and released the day before the robbery. So that's the... That's the people they're spending their money on to get them into our country, among others. And uh, that's why you don't have the money. They want to hold a special session of Congress to give you the money. And we're going to work with you 100 percent. But can you imagine what they've done to this country is unthinkable. These are the people where the money's going instead of the people of your state, North Carolina, South Carolina, Tennessee, Alabama, Florida. All of these places, Georgia, by the way, where they're doing a good job, government is doing a good job, the state government, not, not the federal government.
The United States is now an occupied country, but on November 5th, 2024, we will be a liberated country. We will be liberated like never before. It will be Liberation Day. Under Kamala Harris, 13,099 illegal alien convicted murderers are on the loose in the United States. You know who gave that information? The Border Patrol gave us that information, and they've never done that before. But they said something has to be done. And by the way, thank you to the Border Patrol. They're great. They endorsed your favorite president. They didn't only endorse me, saying I'm the greatest president there's ever been. I said, what about George Washington? Nah, you're better. What about Lincoln? What about Abraham Lincoln? Nope, you're better. They said, I'm tougher on the border than Abraham Lincoln, right? Than Honest Abe. But, you know, they gave me the great endorsement. But at the same time, they did something that's pretty amazing. Because, you know, it's not easy for them to do this. They said, she is the worst we've ever had. She never even called anybody for three and a half, four years. She never even called anybody. She never called one Border Patrol head agent, never once. And she never visited the site. Never visited. This is a woman who is a disaster. She destroyed. The greatest city in our country, I think, might have been San Francisco. She destroyed San Francisco. She helped destroy California, which is hard to do with the weather, the water, the everything. The sun and the water has everything, everything perfect. The location, together with Gavin Newsom, the governor, she destroyed it. And we're not going to let her destroy the United States of America. We're not going to let her. Huh? Right? Just last week, two illegal alien members of the same savage Venezuela gang were arrested in New York for robbing, shooting, and murdering a 59-year-old man in a Connecticut hotel. It was a horrible, horrible scene. One of these monsters was a gotaway. And we're not even including gotaways in those numbers. You know, you know what a gotaway is? That means they come through and nobody checks them. We built hundreds of miles of wall we had the safest border in history. You remember my all-time favorite chart? My all-time I love that chart. I sleep with it. I sleep with that chart. And it showed the best numbers. Is, oh, put the chart up, if you would. Just put it up. Put it up, if you can. Oh, I love it. I love it. Mm. I love it. We didn't have that chart. I wouldn't be with you today. I give that chart a big fat kiss every night I go to bed with that chart. But what that chart also shows is, look at the arrow on the bottom. That was the day I left office. We had the lowest level of illegal immigrants coming into our country, also drugs and lots of other things. Uh, you can take a look at human trafficking of women. Mostly it's women. It's not, you know, they talk about men. It's not men, it's women and children, but mostly women. We had the largest number of 10 times more than came in through me. We had it stopped. We would check in every car, every trunk in every car where they put a lot of them. And we had it stopped. And now it's, now it's out of control. You know, the internet brought that into a crime that's so, it sounds like an ancient kind of a thing. It's not. The Internet made that as profitable as the drug trade. It's, it's really horrible what's going on. What's happened to that border? That border is probably the meanest place maybe in the history of our, our country, certainly, but almost the history of the world. And there's no border like it in the world. There's no border so corrupt, so dangerous, anything like that. There's never been anything like that. What's happening? Millions of people. And what's happening to them, even on the journey up, the fact that they make that journey, the women are it's a horrible thing that happens to the women. You remember when I first ran, I used a certain word, rape. Everyone said, oh, he used the word rape. Well, rape, the, the, the percentage of women that are raped on the trip up, I won't say it, but you won't believe the number. It's uh, just a horrible thing that happens, all because these people, they made it, they're basically saying, come up, we'll give you education, we'll give you this, you'll give, you can stop it all. In one day, you can stop it all in one hour. You can close that. So I built the wall, hundreds of miles. I then ordered 200 miles more. We could have had it up in three days. It flips up 
exactly what Border Patrol wanted, exactly what ICE wanted. Everybody want, we got exactly what they wanted. We could have had it done in literally three to four weeks, completed much more than I promised I was going to do. I built hundreds of miles all. That's one of the reasons we were able to have it. Then I got Mexico to give us soldiers, thousands and thousands of soldiers, free of charge, by the way. Mexico, of course, I did tell them, if you don't do it, I'm going to put tariffs on all your cars that are coming in. I did tell them. They actually said, no, we won't do it. No, we're not going to. I said, you got to give me, you got to give me 28,000 soldiers right away, free of charge. They looked at me, they said, we're not going to do that. Why would we do that? He said, you're going to do it 100 percent. You're going to do it. They said, we're not. I said, you are. They said, no way. I said, way. And then they started wondering, what the hell's going on over here? You know, they were pretty. I said, here's the story. If you don't give us those soldiers, because you're the ones that are letting them in your country and they're coming up from your southern border, if you're not going to give us those soldiers, I'm going to tariff you for 25 percent, then for 50 percent, then for 75 percent, and then for 100 percent. And you're going to have — and you're going to have — you're going to pay us so much money that we can afford to buy an army if we want, like times five. And — and I said, and I have the legislation on my desk, and I'm going to sign it right now unless I hear. Sir, we would like uh, very much to do exactly as you say. We will, we will provide you with soldiers. And it wasn't only that, remain in Mexico. I mean, they said, we're not going to give you remain in Mexico. I said, of course you are, because you're letting them come through your country. We don't want them in our country until we're able to vet them and check them. And when I said the tariffs, the I'm telling you, the most beautiful word in the dictionary is the word tariff. You don't know. They said, no way, no way, no way. And then they said, we would be proud to give you as many soldiers as you want, free of charge, sir. We don't want to charge you anything. Don't forget, they've taken a lot. Oh, and I have just one quick story. So they're building the largest car plant in the world, in Mexico. It's all being financed and done by China. China basically owns it, but they're using Mexico. They make cars and send them through. So this took place about a year ago. I found out about it through a man that builds the plants. I said, what, I want to see a plant. I want to see a car plant. He said, come with me to Mexico, sir. I said, no, I want to see one in the United States. We don't build the big ones in the United States. The big ones are being built in Mexico. I said, why is that? Well, China is there, and they want to build them in Mexico and then sell them into the United States, which will totally close down Michigan, totally close down Detroit, and you won't have any car industry left. So I heard that, and I started thinking about it. I said, how, ter how terrible is that? And then about three months ago, as you know, I started saying, we're not going to allow it to happen. They were getting ready to start the biggest plant in the world, actually. I think two or three of them, but the biggest. They were getting ready to start. And the other day, I was in Detroit at the Detroit Economic Club making a speech on cars and bringing back the automobile industry. And I saw the man that builds the plants. I knew him a little bit. I brought him up. I said, I want to just see you for a minute. Come here. What's happened to that plant? Sir, about two weeks ago, China decided to not build it because they think you're going to be elected president. And if you have to pay tariffs, if they have to pay tariffs, there's no way it can be successful. So there's a case. I didn't even do anything except say, we're going to put tariffs. And I even said, we'll put 100, 200. I don't care what the number is. They're not going to have one car from that massive, giant auto plant come into our country. And I said that. And China decided a couple of weeks ago that not going to be. How good is that? Huh? So I saved Michigan, and I saved Detroit. And I saved you a little bit. You know, with you, it's not as big a deal. But, you know, the same thing applies to other businesses. So we killed that plant just by the threat of tariffs. I'm telling you, outside of love and religion, it's the most beautiful word there is. Tariff! And these stupid people, stupid politicians, they don't like — look, they're either dumb or they're corrupt. Anybody that opposes tariffs for a country where you're going to — because China's been doing that for years. We don't want your cars unless you build the factory in China. We don't want your cars. Japan. Japan doesn't take our cars. They said, if you want to build a factory in Japan, otherwise we're not interested in your cars. 
And what we did is such a beautiful thing. I've got no credit for it whatsoever, but someday they'll give me credit in about 100 years from now. In Wilmington, North Carolina, two months ago, an illegal alien from Venezuela brutally stabbed a man to death. This murder came just four days after he was arrested for domestic violence. But instead of being deported by Kamala, this criminal alien was released into our country where he kills, kills, kills. He's an animal. Every day, Kamala Harris is bringing in illegal aliens who are raping and murdering women and children. You see them all the time. You see them all the time. Their names have become famous. And, and you know, in a certain way, look, it's uh, — they don't want it. I know the parents. I've met so many of the parents. They're devastated. They'll never be the same. They'll never be the same. But their uh, children have not died in vain, because we're going we're gonna to stop it. We're going to stop it. Uh, very strongly, we're going to stop it. We're not going to play games. And because of the, the horrible acts that these people have committed, nobody can even believe it. And it's all because of Biden and Kamala. And in all fairness, Biden put this total stupid person in charge of our border. Think of it. Never made a call. Never went there. She let it just all that she said, keep those borders open, let everybody come in. Now, there's only one reason you do that, I guess. Well, there's three reasons. You're stupid. You hate our country. You can't be that stupid to be able to cheat like they cheat. So you're either stupid, you hate our country, or they're trying to get them to vote, right? And it's probably the third. She's turning beautiful small towns into third-world dumping grounds. She's letting vicious gangs take over whole communities. She's busing and flying them in by the millions. How about the flights? She said, yes. You know, about three months ago, they're getting killed on this issue. So I think it's, again, the most important issue there is, more important than the economy, believe it or not, because this is destroying the fabric of our country. This is, like, destroying our country. And so they tightened it up a little bit. Oh, look, our numbers are a little bit better. Look, oh, Trump stopped the bill. He told the Senate, Ted, did I ever tell you not to sign that bill? No, right? I didn't tell anybody, to, but they liked that. Trump stopped. I sort of liked it. It gives you such power. You know, you come from Queens, and now I'm calling with the, you will not sign that bill, senators. You will not. They have me calling up, you will not sign that bill. Actually, I like that sort of. Maybe I should go along with that story, Ted. That's something nobody's had that kind of power in a long time, right? But all — and again, all she had to do, she didn't need a bill. Just had to call him up and say, close up the border. Wake up the guy up top and just close up the border, please, Joe. Come on over here, Crooked Joe. We're going to sign this right here. Sign right here. Okay. And the border's closed. They don't need — I didn't have a bill. I had the strongest border in history. I didn't have a bill. My father used to tell me that when he'd hire somebody, when they say, sir, uh, an executive, sir, could I have a letter of authorization? Could I have a letter saying that I've been — he said, all of those guys that wanted letters were always weak and ineffective. It was the ones that went and said, I'm the boss now. You're going to listen to me. Those were the ones that did the job. You know, does that make sense? So all, all they had to do — they didn't need anything. All they had to do is say, the border's closed. She's responsible for more human trafficking than any person in history. There's never been a, a problem in human trafficking in history like this one, and she's responsible. If Kamala gets four more years, you will not have a country left. You're not going to have a country left. You'll have 200 million people pouring in from all parts, and mostly prisons and lots of other places that you don't want to hear about. Immediately upon taking the oath of office, I will launch the largest deportation program in American history. I will rescue every town across America that has been invaded and conquered, and we will put these vicious and bloodthirsty criminals in jail or kick them the hell out of our country back to where they came from. And to expedite removals of Trende, Aragua, and other savage gangs like MS-13, equally violent, I will invoke the Alien Enemies Act of 18 no, of 1798. Seven, think of that. 1798, that's when we had real politicians that said, we're not going to play games. We have to go back to 1798. 
to target and dismantle every migrant criminal network operating on American soil. We're going to knock the hell out of them. Don't forget, I'm the one that defeated ISIS, remember? They don't want to do it. The fake news doesn't like talking about it. They don't like talking about things like that. And I did it in a matter of weeks. It was supposed to take five years, seven years. Mattis told me, sir, we won't be able to do that for many years, sir. I said, wait a minute, we have the best planes in the world, the best everything in the world, and they fight with knives and crappy guns? Why? And I went over there, and I found out why, and I had the right guy. I had a real general, not a television general. Not a general that likes to write books, stupid people. These are stupid people. Oh, and the things he said in that book, they put him in great jeopardy, what he said in the book. This stupid guy, Millie, he's the one that said, leave the equipment. Sir, I think we should leave the equipment. It's, it's cheaper to leave a plane that costs $150 million than it is to take it out, sir. That's when I, that's when I knew I had a real dummy. And if they come back into our country, it's an automatic 10 years in jail with no possibility of parole. And I am hereby calling for the death penalty for any migrant that kills an American citizen or law enforcement officer. I will end catch and release into our country. We'll have catch and release into Mexico, if that's okay. I will immediately end all migrant flights. Hundreds of thousands of people are being flown into the middle of our country. I will outlaw sanctuary cities. They're going to be over dead. And I will ban all welfare and federal benefits for illegals. I will restore every Trump border policy and immediately expel all illegals who violate our border. We're going to get them out. We have to, because this is not sustainable by any country. We're running against the most radical, most incompetent, most unfit vice president in the history of our country. No one respects her. No one trusts her. No one takes her seriously. Something is clearly wrong with her. She can't put two sentences together. She's an international joke, and she is going to end up getting us into a third world war. This person cannot be president when the people of North Carolina were stranded and drowning, and Hurricane Helene Kamala Harris was at a glitzy fundraiser in a city that she destroyed, San Francisco. She spent the last four years taking your money to provide shelter and benefits to illegal aliens. But when North Carolina needed help, Kamala Harris was nowhere to be found. And it took her a long time to get here, too. And she only did it. She only did it. She, she only came here because she's running for office. I was here the day after. I didn't want to go in. I didn't want to disturb them. But I was in North Carolina. Kamala Harris does not have the compassion, the smarts, or the strength to be the President of the United States. She just can't do the job. You know it. Everybody knows it. Her people know it. The people that work for her know it. Every single, almost 95 percent of the people that work for her as Vice President quit. They were always quitting because she was uh, a nut job. And on top of it all, she says she would not do one thing differently from Joe Biden, which is totally disqualifying immediately. <laughs> Remember, the most unpopular — everybody says right way, wrong way. Wrong way is 86 percent. So why would you do everything the same? But she should have done it four years ago. Take a look. Would you have done something differently than President Biden during the past four years? There is not a thing that comes to mind. I stood there on the tarmac watching you check your watch. The chaotic and deadly U.S. evacuation from Afghanistan stunned Americans and the world and cost the lives of 13 U.S. soldiers. Would you have done something differently? There is not a thing that comes to mind. More than 13,000 illegal immigrants convicted of murder have been caught at the border and then released into the United States. An Afghan national is in custody today after being accused of plotting an election day terrorist attack. The suspect entered the U.
U.S. on a special immigrant visa. Got wrenching new details in the murder of Georgia nursing student Lakin Riley. The illegal immigrant suspect who cops say committed the heinous murder is a Venezuelan national who crossed the unsecured southern border back in 2022. Two men investigators say are in the country illegally from Venezuela are charged with capital murder and the death of Jocelyn Nungaray. A fifth illegal immigrant accused of attacking two New York City police officers over the weekend showed no remorse or regret. Would you have done something differently? There is not a thing that comes to mind. Only 18% say the economy is in excellent or good condition. U.S. inflation has hit a new 40-year high, increasing by 9.1% over the financial year. The cost of homes have spiked. Home buyers need to earn 80% more than they did in 2020 to afford a house. Were you the last person in the room? Yes. Thank you very much. Good job. You know, a, a friend of mine called me up, and he said, I hate it when you run the clips. Why? Because the press doesn't follow them. They can't move that damn camera up to show that picture. They can't move. No, think of it. I said, no, you must be kidding. All they have to do is turn it just a little bit, a little bit of an angle, and it's fine. But you can't do that, can you? You can't do that. I'm watching the camera. They keep the damn camera focused on me, and I now understand what he's — I was watching him, because a friend called up. He said, it's too bad with the clips. They sound good, but they don't show them. All you have to do is turn it a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right. But he's told by his bosses — right there, the guy right there — he's told by his bosses, don't do it, because they don't want to give us the privilege of seeing murderers in our country. And you should be — and you should be ashamed of yourself. North Carolina, if you want to end this disaster, you must get out and vote. We'll get rid of these stupid people. We're pleased to be joined today by Senator Ted Budd, and I want to say happy birthday, Ted. What are you, about 49 or something? Happy birthday. Great guy. Great senator. Very respected. Thank you, Ted. Another great one that I was very involved in. He did fantastically. And now I think he's running for a thing called Attorney General Dan Bishop. Dan, thank you. I, and I hear you're doing well, right? Thank you. Dan's been a great congressman. Congressional candidate, Lori Buckout. And she's been great. Who has my complete and total endorsement, okay? Lori has my complete. So vote for Lori. You're going to win. You're going to win big. Thank you, Lori. Great. Great job. North Carolina State GOP Chairman Jason Simmons. Jason, thank you, Jason. Good job. Good job, Jason. And I introduce him, but RNC Chairman Michael Watley done a fantastic job. Thank you. Really good. He better win. Oh, if he doesn't win. I'm saying he's so great, he's great, great, great. If he doesn't win, I'll be saying, get rid of that guy. Nah, we'll never say that. I think you're doing great. The numbers so far are amazing. The fake news is a water report. We don't care. The only thing that matters is November 5th, right? So we don't care what they do now. But even they are of concern. They say, this is not looking good. You know, normally you'd say that's a, they mean, they mean it's, a, these numbers are looking incredible, actually, in every state, not just here, in every state. They know what, they know what I mean. And I'm very proud to have my beautiful daughter, Tiffany, here with her husband, Michael. And they're going to have a baby, a beautiful baby. Two good people, too. And a great developer in New York and Florida and elsewhere, one of the greatest businessmen in the country, Mr. Steve Whitkoff. Steve? Thank you, Steve. Great job. Thank you. Great guy. Former head of the Small Business Administration, who, by the way, went to school here. She has to be — I mean, look, she has to be the most successful person ever to graduate from this beautiful place. It's beautiful. Linda McMahon, I mean, I could tell you about her for days. She went here, right? And you loved it. I said, do you like it? She said, I loved it. Otherwise, I wouldn't tell you that. Uh, and a man that you heard speak, and he's a great patriot, and he's a talented guy, went to Harvard, went uh, — did very well. 
It's not as good as the Wharton School of Finance, but that's okay. <laughs> but he's been a, a tremendous voice uh, against China, and we have nothing against China. We just want to be treated fairly. And Peter's one of the few people that really understood what was happening. Peter Navarro. Peter, wherever you are. Peter. Hi, Peter. I heard Peter. I said, he's doing well. I didn't get to see you, but now I see you. Good. Good job. Good job today. Good job forever. He was a strong voice on what you and I believe in, right? We, he was great. And again, I want to thank Elon Musk for doing such a great job. He's been really — he's now campaigning for us in Pennsylvania. So that's pretty good. So here are the facts. Kamala Harris is a radical left Marxist rated even worse than Bernie Sanders or Pocahontas. You know who that is. She destroyed our economy. She was an original creator of Defund the Police. Can you believe that one? The movement that is such a disaster, and anybody who wants to defund the police even for one day is not worthy of being President of the United States, the way I look at it. Kamala Harris vowed to abolish ICE. You know what that is, ICE. These are the toughest people, and they go into these gangs, and they go fists. Fists swinging, legs swinging, and they come out two minutes later, and they take them out of our country. They are rough people we're dealing with, but ICE is incredible, and they love our country. She wanted to get rid of ICE. They want to take them out. Who's going to do it? Who's going to do it? She's not going to do it. She vowed repeatedly to ban fracking, she said, as California Attorney General. She redefined child sex trafficking, assault with a deadly weapon, and rape of an unconscious person as totally nonviolent crimes. Can you imagine? She pledged to confiscate your guns and endorsed a total ban on handgun ownership. Oh, by the way, if you like guns, you can forget her. She's going to do it 100 percent. She even called for free sex changes for illegal aliens in detention. Think of that. They're in detention at taxpayer expense, sex changes. They want — they're in detention. They want to have the operation, and she — and by the way, aside from all the other problems, uh, it's a very big and expensive operation. And then, of course, you saw that yesterday. She lied about working at McDonald's. That's a pretty bit. And on top of everything else, Kamala wants to turn our military woke. Watch this. You little scumbag! I got your name! I got your ass! You will not laugh! You will not cry! You will learn by the numbers! Happy Pride. Happy Pride Month. And actually, let's declare it a summer of pride. So you're a killer! Sir, yes, sir! Let me see your war face! So just remember, we won two world wars with that kind of stuff, right? We won two world wars. We don't want to be woke, and we're not going to be woke. And our military is not. When they knocked out ISIS, they were, there was nothing woke about them. You could put them in a woke cage for two years. They'd come out fighting. They're not woke. Only the top few people, they're woke. They're woke. And they're, they'll be gone fast. 
But in conclusion, with your vote this November, we are going to fire Kamala Harris. We're going to save America. And we're going to restore the greatness of our nation for citizens of every race, religion, color, and creed. With your support, we will cut your taxes, end inflation, slash your prices, raise your wages, and turn the United States into the manufacturing superpower of the world. It'll be very quick. We will build American, we will buy American, and we will hire American. I will end the war in Ukraine. I will stop the chaos in the Middle East, and I will prevent World War III. Nobody else is going to do that. We are never — we have never been closer. We will crush violent crime and give our police the support, protection, resources, and respect they so dearly want and deserve. We will strengthen and modernize our military. We will build a missile defense shield around our country, all made in the USA, including a place called North Carolina. And we will land an American astronaut on Mars. And before I go too further, some of my favorite people are here. These women, finally, finally — and I can't believe I'm right here. I don't know you why you get these primos. I guess that's — they're the bosses. These women have seen 259 rallies. This isn't even rally. This is a get — this is a little get-together. Can you imagine? You have — you have 9,000 people on a Monday afternoon, and we call it a little get-together. They come from North Carolina. Look at them. They come from North Carolina, and they come out to California. They go to Texas. They're happily married. I don't know how the hell that works. I don't know how that works. They're happily — they have great husbands, but they are happily married. You're going to have to tell me about that. But these are the greatest, most beautiful women, and they've seen it a lot. And they never get tired of hearing the truth, ever. They never get tired of hearing the truth. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We will rebuild our cities, including our capital in Washington, D.C., making them safe, clean, and beautiful again. We will teach our children to love our country, to honor our history, and to always respect our great American flag. We will get critical race theory and transgender insanity the hell out of our school. We will keep men out of women's sports. I will defend religious liberty. I will restore free speech, and I will defend the right to keep and bear arms. After years of building up foreign nations, defending foreign borders, and protecting foreign lands, we are finally going to build up our country, defend our borders, and protect our citizens. And we will stop illegal immigration once and for all. It will be stopped. We will not be invaded. We will not be occupied. We will not be conquered. We will be a free and proud nation once again, and it will be very soon. Everyone will prosper, every family will thrive, and every day will be filled with opportunity and hope in the American dream. But for that to happen, we must defeat Kamala Harris. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? And stop her radical left agenda with a landslide that is too big to rig. Early voting is underway. Get everyone you know and vote. After all, and remember this, all we've been through — we've been through a lot together, haven't we? Huh? We suffered for four years. For four years, we suffered. Our country suffered. We stand on the verge of the four greatest years in the history of our country. That's what's going to happen. With your help, from now until Election Day, we will redeem America's promise. We will put America first, and we will take back the nation that we love. We are one people, one family, and one glorious nation under God. We will never give in. We will never give up. We will never back down. And we will never, ever, ever surrender. Together, we will fight, 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 and we will win, win, win. That's what we're going to be doing. November 5th.
will be the most important day in the history of our country. And together, we will make America powerful again. We will make America wealthy again. We will make America healthy again. We will make America strong again. We will make America proud again. We will make America safe again. And we will make America great again. Thank you very much. God bless you. God bless you all. God bless you. Yeah.